in the lands of the north, where the black rocks stand guard against the cold sea. In the dark night that is very long, the men of the Northland sit by their great log fires, and they tell a tale. They tell the tale of Noggin the Nog, of Ivor the Engine, of the Clangers, creatures who dwelt on a calm, serene orb, sailing majestically among the myriad stars of the firmament. And they tell the tale of Bagpus, the saggy old cloth cat, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The men of the Northlands know and revere the enchanting tales of these towering figures, heeding not the stories of lesser creatures, who they know to be a scourge in the minds of the young. One day, Noggin, wishing to celebrate the lives of himself and his friends, sent Graculus, the royal bird of the land of Nogs, bearing invitations across the land, all happily accepted, eager to share the joys of each other's company, and set off to Noggin's castle. The feast went splendidly, long into the night. The great banquet hall was bustling with colour, alive with the sounds of friendship and merriment, and clangors whistling contentedly. After a time, Noggin called out, I say, everyone, let's go out and have some fun. Why don't some of you pay Parsley the Lion a visit? A murmur of laughter rippled through the hall. Parsley was not one of their friends. None of the herbs were. And so Ivor the Engine set off, driven by Jones the Steed, slowly and quietly at first, but he soon picked up speed, chugging along gleefully. And as the sound of his movement broke into a roaring screech, he crashed through the wall of the herb garden and carved a path of carnage and destruction over the greenery. Sir Basil and Lady Rosemary roused from their sleep and tried to stop Ivor's escapade, but were mown down easily. Parsley the lion leapt forth, offering a feeble roar, but Bagpus had been riding on Ivor's back and promptly jumped at Parsley, scratching at his face again and again and again, to show that he was stronger. When Ivor and Bagpus eventually left the garden, a fractured wreck, Parsley was quietly moaning for help, but he knew no one would come for they never did. He was truly pathetic. Bagpus was just an old saggy cloth cat, baggy and a bit loose at the seams, but Emily loved him. And to show her devotion to her friend, she hopped off either as he relaxed his pace. She then crept up slowly and silently behind Florence from the magic roundabout and gently snapped her neck. Dougal the dog watched silently. Once Ivor and his passengers had departed, Dougal buried his friend alone. He was the only one left now. Ooh, I don't want it to end like this, Zippy. It isn't fair, said George, the pink wretch, as he and his friend Zippy fled through Noggin's castle. I, I, I don't want to go, George. I don't. Oh, poor Jeffrey and Bungle. I tried to save them. I. Ooh, who's me, Zippy? I love you, George. Eventually, Noggin and the Clangers cornered them, and their prattling was silenced forever when Noggin took them to a secret place and burned them. Their work done, the Clangers thanked Noggin for his hospitality and their friend the soup dragon drunkenly flew them home, stopping briefly on the way to chase Auntie Mabel and Pippin through the air, forcing their plane down onto Trumpeton, the resulting explosion wiping out everybody in the town. Ivor returned from his jaunt with Emily and Bagpus, who both went to be sick from the wine they had had, before thanking Noggin and leaving as well. Soon Noggin and the other Nogs were alone again, and they stayed up in the great banquet hall for only a few minutes more reflecting on the deepest friendship which they shared with the others. It was a wonderful thing. They were lucky indeed. And then, with the embers of the Trumpton fire outside still glimmering over a distant hill, they settled down for bed. But they must remember not to sleep too long. They were going to go and surprise Postman Pat in the morning.